Imagine a brain unbound by the limitations of memory. A brain that remembers everything for you. One you trust completely. It doesn't just store information. It evolves, learns and becomes more powerful over time. A second brain. It mirrors the way your mind works, forming connections effortlessly just as neurons connect in your own brain. Each link is a spark of understanding, a bridge between ideas. It's a place where knowledge isn't static, but alive, growing and adapting to the way you think. This is the essence of Obsidian, a tool that doesn't just store your notes, but transforms the way you interact with information. This video is the first installment in a two-part series. I don't want the videos to get too long, so in this video I'll explain how I use Obsidian and in the next one I'll explain how to set up your vault to be like mine. If you're watching this video, you already know about Notion. I started my journey into PKM with Notion but then quickly became annoyed with Notion's online first approach. I was also annoyed with how slow the search function was in Notion. This was also a time when I was shifting all my data from cloud-based platforms to open source self-hosted ones. I switched from Google Drive and OneDrive to SyncThing and started using Duplicati for backups. Also, I'm going to assume that you know some basics of Obsidian like how linking works. But uh, if you don't, there are plenty of videos explaining that. I use Obsidian for almost everything and I say almost because there are some shortcomings here as well. More on that later. Most Obsidian advocates will preach a bottom-up approach where you have three or four folders for all the nodes and all your nodes go into one big folder. I tried that, but the fact that everything was in one folder was driving me nuts. I wanted to be able to find files just by navigating the folders like I have it set up on my PC. And so I made my own folder structure for Obsidian as you can see here. Although you see a lot of folders there, I use Obsidian mainly for journaling, content consumption notes, inventorying, documenting knowledge fields, and personal CRM or people management. I'll explain later. Let's start with journaling. The journaling folder is split into daily journals, weekly journals, monthly journals, and special journals. These special journals are imports from Notion mainly and plans, usually when there are holidays coming up. The folder structure for the daily journal is year, and then month, and then finally the journal note. Now, before I get into the crux of it, let me explain the log functionality. I first got this idea from Construct by D in one of his videos where he showcased it. Since then, I have incorporated this into basically every part of my Obsidian Vault. Essentially, it gives you an idea of where a note was referenced and under what context. This could be extremely useful if you want to see when and where you did certain tasks relating to the note. Let me give you an example. People and personal CRM. Say you want to quickly look up when you were in touch with someone, what you spoke during the call and any follow-ups for the next call. Content consumption. You're reading a book and you would like to see on which days you read the book and what chapters. Or you're watching a series and you want to log what episodes you saw on what days. Inventory. Like maybe if you wanted a log of all your thoughts about that item over time. Tacit knowledge. Logging drives in different cars or bikes, logging stints in different games. You get the idea. You can quite literally incorporate it with every note. And using Espanso, you can set up templates for your different logs. You can check out my Espanso video to know more. My daily journal is mostly a log of the most important things I did that day. It will also link to the other notes that I created that day. This could be people I met, who I talked with, about what, places I traveled, content I consumed, an idea I had, or just another note I worked on. For example, if I saw this video, I'd write it here as Or if I had a chat with Marcus Brownlee, I'd say, but first I have to add Marcus Brownlee. I don't have a note for him right now, so I'll add him quickly using the quick add plugin. 
and then add him in the note and say i also read this book i write or if i played some american truck simulator i write it will all be here in my daily note now here's the magic here's where obsidian stands out and why i use it now because we have used the log functionality in each of these notes when in the template i can see this date referenced right here along with what was written with it on that day let's open a local graph view so you can see you get the idea here i've got this daily note that links to all other notes that were relevant that day weekly notes are a summary of the goals that i had during the start of the week what were my accomplishments during that week what were the highs lows and what i should start doing stop doing and continue doing monthly journal is the same idea but on a monthly scale i can't usually plan that ahead so i don't use it coming to content consumption i've split it into different areas like anime articles books so on and so forth let me show you what a note in content consumption looks like now i'd say don't try to make obsidian your all in one tool it is definitely possible to do everything in obsidian but i don't think the effort is worth it like i could technically use obsidian with the excalibur plugin for taking notes on my galaxy tab but it's so much simpler to use the samsung notes again for managing projects and making simple databases it is still possible to do it in obsidian but i still think that notion is a better tool so there is still a use case for notion even if you switch to obsidian i also maintain an inventory for things like electronics and big purchases that have receipts and potential future warranty claims the way it works for me is i note down the date of purchase and relevant dates and i have a folder structure within my computer where i store all these receipts in those dates and i really like the feeling of <laughs> owning this data and it only existing locally on my devices yep and this is data that i also sync across all my devices using sync thing i'll make another video about that then we come to the knowledge fields i have divided this into explicit fields which is like bookish knowledge and tacit fields which is knowledge you get by doing things or by experiences now i know this isn't perfect there is going to be some overlap between them and well i've picked the one that just made the most sense for me and stuck with it i know where everything is because i navigate through these folders quite regularly then there's the people folder that forms my personal crm or customer relationship management which brings me to the topic of tags now if you have folders why would you use tags what's the point isn't it like the same thing the way i think of it is whenever something fits into multiple categories and you want to discover it in the future in multiple ways then that's a sign that you should be using tags because a single note can have multiple tags and i have done this for youtubers as well so often times i learn something from a certain youtuber i'll tag them with the guru tag and for a certain domain so for example if i want to know all of my obsidian gurus i just have to go to guru and then the obsidian tag i'll see all the influencers that i have taken inspiration from if you felt like you got great value from this video please consider hitting the like button or better yet subscribe so you don't miss out another video like this one stay tuned for part 2 on how to set up your obsidian vault